Hello, good day. I welcome you to today's lesson in science on the topic farming system. So we've been doing a lot on farming method, farming practices, and we've learned so much. So today we are beginning a new topic titled farming systems. So objectives for this lesson is that by the end of the lesson you should be well or introduced to farming systems and to know the various farming systems that exist. So farming system. Now there are various methods by which crops are cultivated and farm animals are reared. The selection of a particular farm method in an area depends on a number of factors. These include the following land availability and soil type, climatic pattern, the type of implement which is ready, readily available, sources of water for irrigation, availability of labor, and availability of extension offices to provide technical support for farmers. So when it comes to farming system, I mean farming in general, it has to do with a lot of factors. It has to do with, like we looked at in our previous lesson, land availability, type of soil, seed type, type of propagation, and the rest. So all these have to be looked at in perspective. You have to make sure that your land is available. You have to make sure that the soil with which you want to use to plant is the right one for the particular plant you are going to plant. You have to make sure that the seed you are going to use is actually a very good seed so that the plants can grow well. You have to make sure of the type of propagation, how to spread or to increase the number of plants you are going to plant. Okay. And then you have to be aware of climate, rain, sunshine, uh, dry season and the rest so that you can make very good decision so, so that your plants do not die. So there are a lot of things that go into plant farming or into farming. You need to know the sources of water irrigation. You need to know the tools you need to, you are going to use. So depending on which scale with which you are farming, if it's a very large scale, you are you know that you, you need things like very complex gadgets or machines like harvesters, tractors and the rest. But if it's a small scale farming, you know that you need tools like hoes, cutlass and the rest, shovels, pickaxe for minor jobs and then availability of labor labor means the people you are going to employ the workers so if you realize that it's going to be a very big scale then you need more workers all these things have to go into farming availability of extension officers to provide technical support now when it comes to farming it, it does not only involve just the farmer but then people need to come and support in terms of fertilizer in terms of space in terms of any technical issues that has to do with the farm these people you need to get people to come around to come and check it for you so farming is not just a single method or a single decision but then it has so many factors that you need to consider so it is impossible to rely on a single farming method to produce all the foods that are needed to support human population this is because of the factors that exist at different places. All the methods used to produce foods are important because they work together to achieve the same objective, that is food production. So like I was saying, all these things, the climatic fac factors, the type of soil and the rest, all these things have to look, be looked at in perspective and individually so that you work on all of them to achieve one purpose that is to get your plants to grow well and to harvest them for food so basically that's that so let's look at farming system farming system refers to all the different methods which are used to produce crops 
and animal products note that when it comes to farming it's not only plants but then plants and animals farming has to do with plants and animals because we have animal farming and plant farming okay so farming system refers to all the different methods which are used to produce crops and animal products farming system is also known as agriculture or agricultural system agricultural system so note that and this is the definition for farming system so let's look at the various farming systems we have in Ghana so in Ghana usually the local farmers practice these systems we have shifting cultivation we have land rotation crop rotation crop rotation mixed cropping mixed farming extensive farming intensive farming pastoral farming monocropping and organic farming so all these methods are actually used by farmers but then for planting a particular crop you need to know which system will be good for the particular plant and usually people don't usually go with one particular farming system you can go with two or more and we look at for this lesson we are going to look at shifting cultivation so what is shifting cultivation this is the type of farming which involves the farmer cultivating a piece of land or planting on a piece of land for some time and then he later leaves it and then cultivates on a new land when the old one has lost its fertility so for instance the farmer has two farm one and two so the farmer cultivates or plants on this farm okay but then when the soil loses its nutrients and the rest what happens is that the farmer leaves this and then goes to the next farm okay so the farmer moves his settlements and his family to the new land so usually whether the farmer will leave his original home and go to the next place and settle there because now he will be working on this farm okay and it's usually because it has to do with movements it's usually done on a small scale and when I say a small scale it means that it's the person is not done on a very huge land okay something that is sizable so that you can actually move from one place to the other so that is and then now crop or shifting cultivation has actually moved or it's really being used because of increase in population there's been a lot of inc uh, people coming into the urban areas and movement and settlements here and there so you realize that people cannot actually practice this system of farming because there's been an increase in population and land for farming has actually become scarce so shifting cultivation is gradually dying off let's look at some advantages of shifting cultivation so shifting cultivation what happens is that the person the farmer actually plants on one after that land has lost its nutrients and ability to grow plants then the farmer moves to that next so one advantage is that the land actually regains its fertility during the fallow period and fallow period is the period with which the land actually rests so for instance if we have land a and land b when the farmer finished cultivating here and moves here this land is left bare okay this land is left bare and then because it's left bare and no planting is done it will regain its ability it will regain all the nutrients that has lost and when the farmer finishes with this and this also loses its ability to plant then the farmer goes back to this one so that's one advantage of shifting cultivation also simple farm implements like hoes and cutlasses are used so like i said previously that it's usually done for farming in a low scale where you don't need a very big land to do the farming 
and also pests and diseases are controlled so because of the movement pests and diseases are controlled let's look at a disadvantage disadvantages of shifting cultivation so the land is fully not utilized so this is because you realize that the farmer actually moves from one place to the other so in certain cases the land is actually not fully used to its full um, potential and then the farmer moves or another time another thing you can also consider is during the fallow period during the resting period that the land might not fully regain its nutrients and then the farmer comes back to plant on it so that is one of the disadvantages of shifting cultivation the land is not fully utilized also regular clearing and burning of vegetation encourages soil erosion so with shifting cultivation when the farmer leaves one farm and goes to the other what happens is that they usually burn the the so let's say a we have farm a and farm b and b when the farmer moves to this part farm b what happens is that they will usually burn farm a to clear all the weeds and so after burning you realize that the soil becomes bare with no plants on it and this soil is actually vulnerable to soil erosion so the top soil can be washed away during raining seasons or dry seasons when the wind blows the system destroys virgin forests so like i said because of the burning it destroys um, virgin forest and virgin forest actually means places that have a lot of plants on them food that is produced is small this is because of the limited farm size and so because shifting cultivation is done on a low scale the farm size is actually not big so food produced for shifting cultivation is small you can also use that so basically that's the disadvantages of shifting cultivation so in today's lesson we've learned of or you've been introduced on the farming systems and the various types of farming systems we have and shifting cultivation and the advantages and disadvantages of shifting cultivation so i've given some assignments and i hope this video will help you to solve them until we meet again enjoy your day bye bye Thank you.